What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with session variables in .NET Core 6. So I'm in Visual Studio 2022. First thing we need to do is create a new project. I'm going to select ASP.NET Core Web API. And I'm just going to accept all the defaults, let that spin up, and I'll be back in a second. And we're just finishing up here. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to need to go into my program.cs and configure a few things. So we need to set up our distributed memory cache and also our session. So I'm going to go to my iServices collection here and just going to add the following method call. So builder.services.add distributed memory cache. And essentially what this does is it... Um, creates a default implementation of the I distributed, what is it, I distributed cache interface, I think. And it allows us to um, store objects in memory. So the next thing we need to do is add our session. So builder.services.add session. And you could stop there. Um, you can also uh, pass in session options if you want to set those. I'm just going to set a, a timeout so this arrow function is for our session options and I can just uh, do something like options dot idle timeout equals time span dot from minutes and we'll just set it for 10 minutes so after 10 minutes of idle time this session is going to be abandoned and then I need to come down to our web app here and just simply add app dot use session and uh, if you start adding some more middleware here, um, add routing, um, you know, use routing and and things like that. Use MVC or raise or MVC. I think it's MVC or something like that. Um, it, it might matter what order you put this use session in, but for for this demonstration, it doesn't matter. We're just going to put it right there. So that's all we need for our program.cs. The next thing we need is a place to store our session keys. So, you know, I mean, the way session works, is kind of like a dictionary. It's like a, a collection of key value pairs. So our session keys, we're going to create two of them. We're going to create one for um, our, you know, current user and, you know, and one for our session ID. So let me just go ahead and go to add class. And I'll simply name this session variables. And in here, I'm going to add two public constants. So public const string. These are always going to be strings. And um, session key username equals. And, you know, I'm just going to give it the same because these are keys. So and I'm going to copy this and do the same thing for our session ID. So session key session ID and just name that the same. Um, you could, if you don't want to use uh, public strings, you could also use an, enumer an enumeration, so public enum and session key enum, how about that? And we can just take our strings here and that could be zero and set this equal to one. So we can use either one of these things to get and set our session key properties. So now we need to add a controller. I'm going to go to controllers, right click, add controller. And I want to add an empty API controller. So I'm just going to uh, name that as session controller. And I realized I went kind of fast there. So it was right click controllers, add controller. You will select API up here, API controller, empty and click add. Okay, so for this, we're going to just use the built in swagger functionality. So swagger UI to, uh, you know, bring back our variables, um, our values. So I'm just going to need a, a get method here. So HTTP get 
public. It's going to be a collection, so I'll say high enumerable string and get session info. Now I'm going to click create a list of string and we'll just call it uh, session info. So this is what we're going to return. Now, so the way we um, access our session is through HTTP context. So I just want to put some null checking around this. So if string dot is null or white space, and I want to say HTTP uh, context dot session, okay, dot get, oh, I see it. We want context, not content. So let's bring back our IntelliSense. So get string, and I'm just going to look in session variables. But I'm looking for my username, and so as long as that's not equal to null, we're going to go ahead and set up our session variables. So. We will call HTTP context dot session dot set string. And, and then we can just say session, that's correct, session variables, session key username, and then just give it a name. I'm just going to call it current user. You can give it any string name that you want there for this value. Um, I'm going to copy that line and we're going to do the same thing for our session ID. Um, for this one though, I'm going to create a GUID and um, convert it to a string. So GUID.new GUID, which will create a new one each time and then just convert to string. That's how we set up our session variables. And the next thing we need to do is retrieve them. So I'm going to uh, create a couple of string variables here. So we'll say username and HTTP context dot session. And now we need to call get string. So we can just keep that session variables dot username. And we can do the same for our session ID. So let me change that to session ID. And then let's go ahead and add those to our list. So session info dot add username and session info dot add session ID. Um, we don't we can ignore these warnings here. Um, something about session ID may be null. Well, strings are nullable, so um, Let's go ahead. So now it's we have our list. It's going to return our list. So the next thing to do is to test this out with Swagger. I'm going to hit Control F5 and bring up our Swagger UI page. So we have our controller here. I'm just going to expand that, try it out, and click on Execute. And there's our response. We have current user and the GUID that was created. So let me close out of that. Now... Let's go back to our session variables. So say we want to use our enum. We used our public um, string constants here. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's probably about the only time that I would ever use a public variable would be that. But a lot of people would prefer to use an enum, and that works just as well. So let's go ahead and try that out. So let me copy that session key enum. I'm just going to come in here and replace this and we also need to get the we need to convert that to string because the enum itself would be an integer so we don't want that um, now let me just fire this up again um, control f5 and there's our swagger page and let me just expand try it out execute and we have success. There's our current user. We have a new GUID because it creates a new one every time. So that's just the basics of uh, setting up, um, you know, your 
.NET Core API uh, to use session. Uh, pretty simple. We just did a couple of things in here. And like I said, you didn't really need to configure the timeout here. You could just, you know, write it just like this method here. You don't need to put the options in and it'll work just as well. So pretty easy to get, at, to get that up and running. Um, if you like this uh, video, please uh, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything. And um, until next time, I'll see you then.